this could be a big year for SMU. Rhett Lashley has done a great job of continuing to produce explosive offenses. They just need to figure out the defense side of the ball, but this is a team that can compete for an AAC championship. We're going to break down the top 10 players for this team in 2023, and it starts with the transfer. Jordan Hudson was once committed to SMU, but then followed Sonny Dykes to TCU and actually had a couple of moments where we saw him break out when TCU needed him. And obviously that talent is loaded at wide receiver with the Horn Frogs last year, and it will be again this year. But Jordan Hudson comes back to SMU, who he's once formerly committed to, and now he gets an opportunity to showcase his talent, why he is considered a former four-star. The, the wide receiver comes in, again, from Power 5 competition, so that gives him plenty of experience against sometimes better competition to be able to bring this offense to a new level. You have a new quarterback coming in, and a guy like Jordan Hudson could be a huge piece for SMU in this offense, and that's something to keep an eye on. This is a group that was explosive through the air, seventh last year in passing yards so it's a group that's going to be really fun to watch plenty of talent to utilize it's just a matter of finding that cohesion finding that chemistry the defense like i said before will be the biggest concern for smu and that continues whether that's under rhett lashley or whether it was under sunny dykes anybody before them too the defense really was the question mark and it's not because of a lack of talent there are plenty of guys to to see and to compete and nelson paul is one of those players i think an underappreciated player nine tackles for loss five sacks again smu has the talent there's not a question about do they have the right guys in place they do it's just a matter of playing as a unit when you look at what they did last year this is a group that finished 119th in scoring this is a, a group that also finished 105th in yards per play allowed. They average six yards per play. So this is a team that needs to get better defensively. They need to be able to create create stops, create more turnovers, and be more disruptive. They have the talent to be able to do it. Nelson Paul is one of those players that's proven that he can be disruptive. Eight and, 18 and a half tackles for loss proves that he knows how to get into the backfield and make plays. And again, the talent is there. The front seven will be really interesting to watch. Because of guys like Paul, another guy that will contribute to that is Devere Levelston. Devere Levelston is an NFL talent when he is playing at his peak. He is someone who has pretty decent size, and I don't know if they're going to use him at defensive end, defensive tackle. They've kind of moved him around in his career at 6'5", 289 pounds. It's, it'll be interesting to see if they can just keep him at one position, if they are able to just allow him to work and, and really hone in at one position and his skill set. I, I think that would be the best for him. He's an explosive player who can be disruptive and another player that will play a big role in determining how good this team is. The AAC is a different conference. It's more wide open than it's ever been. And a team like SMU can compete for that championship. Offensive line play will be another key contributor to that. Justin Osborne is back. 33 games of experience under his belt. SMU's offensive linemen have been really solid. You look at what they've had in the past, Jalen Thomas, Alan Ali, you've had some really talented players at offensive line, and having a player at guard like Justin Osborne will ensure that your passing attack and your rushing attack continue to be one of the most lethal groups in college football. Guys that will benefit from that are guys like Kyler, Tyler Levine. A, a big year for him last year, thanks to some injuries and whatnot. 642 yards and 10 touchdowns. And that is the intriguing part. The more intriguing part, I guess, if you want to pick one, is just the fact that he has the neck plate. He, he has the crazy eye black, and he is a relentless runner. He is a physical runner, and he refuses to go on. He is a nice blend to some of the talented players that they have coming in from the transfer portal. He is a nice change up to what they probably have at some of these other skill positions. You look at the speed that they have, the ability, then you throw in a guy like Tyler Levine, who is pretty much just going to be a downhill runner and try to run you over and send a message. So that's really nice to have for this offense. The guy that he'll help the most is Jalen Knighton. The Miami transfer follows Rhett Lashley to SMU, and we've seen him be really explosive. That's the biggest thing for this SMU team is the fact that Knighton still has a lot left in the tank to me is huge for this offense. I think that he is just getting started. He just needed an opportunity to showcase his talent. Obviously, staying healthy will also help, but 
this is a player who can be explosive, who can be a big time playmaker. You look what SMU's had, especially in Lashley's previous previous stop with SMU. The skill positions really took over. The days of James Prochet and Xavier Jones stand out the most. And I think that having a, a, t- a team with Jalen Knighton in it makes you even better, makes you even more dangerous. So the rushing attack shouldn't take a step back, even though it was, so if you want to pick a weakness of the offense last year, this is a group that finished 64th in rushing. So kind of right down the middle, but it's a group that can be explosive, that can be a factor, and the quarterback play will add to that. I think you see that number get better, and I think the passing attack maybe takes a little bit of a step back, but overall you're still keeping that same explosiveness. And it's not because of lack of options downfield. Jordan Curley is back, has an opportunity to show why he is wide receiver one for SMU. Again, plenty of talent. We mentioned Jordan Hudson, but Jordan Curley comes back and I think is set for a big year. We've seen what he can do. We've seen glimpses of his talent and we've seen his ability to make big plays. It's just a matter of doing that consistently. Passing attack, like I said, should be just fine. Even if you utilize the running backs, because the running backs are are loaded. You talked about Jalen Knight and we talked about Tyler Levine. You have Kamar Wheaton. You have Belton Gardner. That is a deep group that can be utilized both in the running game and the passing attack. So even if the wide receivers don't necessarily step up, you have other guys that you can utilize. But I think that their passing attack is just fine because they have guys like Jordan Curley, because they have guys like Jordan Hudson. We are going to get a really exciting group of playmakers and SMU's offense will once again be a nightmare to stop. It's just a matter of what the defense can do. We've already talked about a couple players on front seven. Elijah Chapman comes back. And again, another player that you'd like to see be a little bit more disruptive. He has 24 tackles for loss in his career. You'd like to see the sacks go up a little bit. SMU just doesn't have right now a proven reliable threat on the edge that can be explosive and really quick around the edge. Chapman and Levelston are powerful and have good suddenness to them. It's just a matter of can they get around the edge? Because if you can't challenge that offensive tackle, the only move you have is straight up at them or on the inside. So a guy like Elijah Chapman plays a big role in what they can do. Because the secondary, I think the secondary also has some talent. It's just a matter of what can they do to be consistent? Because covering in this conference has never been easy. It's never going to be easy. And I don't expect it to be, but if your front seven can do a lot more damage than you're expecting, I think that you're looking at a group that could be much better. Now, we talked about the quarterback before. Preston Stone is set to have, in my opinion, a monster year for SMU, not only as a passer, but as a runner. The one thing that he brings to the table that Tanner Mordecai did not was the ability to create explosive runs. Now, Mordecai could run. That is not, it wasn't, is forte it wasn't his primary source of picking up yards he wanted to throw the football preston stone is going to be able to run the football a little bit more and with the skill position players he has teams have to respect so many things that are going to create openings for other players so even if teams start to hone in on on preston stone and take him away jalen knighton and tyler levine and the running backs are going to benefit from that. The passing attack will also benefit from that, and that also helps Stone. This is a a first-time player, that a first-time starter that got some good experience last year, and when you look at Rhett Lashley's track record with quarterbacks, it's really exciting what Preston Stone could do for this team in 2023. One of his favorite targets, a guy who is set to have a breakout season, is R.J. Maryland. Again, SMU has had plenty of talent and last year Rishi Rice obviously deserved a lot of love for what he did and at times he was the only player being consistent so finding someone that can be in consistent target is probably the biggest thing replacing Rishi Rice won't be a one person job a guy like RJ Maryland is going to be a good target for Preston Stone but he is not going to be the only guy still RJ Maryland is a really exciting talent comes back at 6'4 233 pounds maybe you want to see him add some more size to his frame but you can also use him as the new age Y as in terms of who you can find downfield you're looking at some of these tight ends that are are bigger that can help in the running game RJ Maryland is going to be more of that pass catching tight end. They'll utilize him as a blocker, but he is someone who thrives more as a pass catcher. 
We talked about the offense quite a bit, and it's easy to see why. This is a team that will rely on scoring points to win football games. Even if you improve as a defense, there's still going to be this offense that will score a ton of points. And it's just a matter of can their defense create enough stops to slow teams down and give their offense more opportunities, put more points on the board. SMU is really exciting. This is a new age AAC, especially with conference alignment realignment. This is a team that has a big opportunity to showcase their value and showcase that they can actually win a conference championship under Rhett Lashley.